Freitag.
words are used for manifesting. So you say like, I want that, and then you go and do that. <laughs> that gives the train track for the that linear timeline to play out, or at least try to play out. At least give it, it gives it the opportunity to play out. Whereas before the words came in, that laid the groove for that particular thing, it can happen. So practicality is one of the main things, main three, that words do. Play. Play is, to me, the most important aspect of words. Practicality is good and everything, but play is more... Play is more attuned to what the existence is outside of the bullshit and repression and uh, masochism that we have going on here. It's just play. All of it's play. And dancing, things like that. So, words are very good with play if you are not hanging on to the, you know, the death cult mindset. If you're holding on to that, then the words are not play for you. They are harbingers or harbingers of doom for you. And then the, the third one, the third one is words are for lies.
bandwagon. Either. Because you do that, say so you're like, well, fuck. The words are all lies. So that means everything I've ever said in my entire life is a lie. And therefore, I'm going to go meditate under a bush for the rest of my life and live in truth. Or meditate in a cave where the bush seekers can't find me. And the problem with doing that is you're going to go sit in the cave and then your words, which are lies, are not just going to stop. You might stop the hot air part, but the words inside of your mind now will be saying things like, you did it, you escaped, you won, you're enlightened now. very act of moving outside of the imprisoning aspect of words will itself set another trap for when you're inside the cave for the words to, to start talking about how you arrived there. They're going to keep going. And they're always lies. <laughs> words have never said any truth whatsoever. about 
about it, then the words are part of the thing you're trying to talk about, and you get back to what Alan Watts talked about, trying the teeth trying to bite themselves, or trying to touch the tip of this finger with the tip of this finger. You can't do it. this entire time and what has it led to conflict <laughs> right at a certain point uh, the ones claiming things with the words even the ones with the best intentions the ones that aren't like intentionally set internally to just fuck everyone and you know be malicious and have more than your share of the existence even those ones that are honestly trying to say the truth with words at some point they just start feeling silly they're like i've been talking and 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 we've written books and we've done things and we've gone on expeditions we've had get-togethers we've had We've done every literal thing we could possibly think of. We've said every combination of words possible, some way or another. Maybe this one personally has not said all the words possible, but at a certain point, the knowledge that the combinations have all been said hits. And the person that's trying to say the truth is like, <laughs> they just shut up. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, okay. So I don't have to be making so much noise all the time. And then once that happens, then you have the option to make noise or not make words and you can basically claim whatever you want because again they are lies <laughs> and if you want us to, to be truthful or say the truth then you wouldn't say anything at all and you would just be a good person I guess if you want to be a good person just go do that you don't need words for that you know what feels good you know what feels correct when you're treating other people a certain type of way we like yakking and yakking and talking and talking and talking forever and ever. Because I don't know why. I just like it. For me, the words are interesting because they don't have uh, an ending to them. There's not an end to the the variations of them. So I like talking, but at the same time there's also not an end to the variations of the rest of the existence outside the conceptual mind. Again, conceptual mind, ego mind, somehow figured that it was like the only most important part of all of existence. And then we had this situation. And so that concept mind was simply throwing a tantrum, like a really big, really long, really, 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 really long tantrum. And it needed something, like the conceptual mind needed something. And when it gets what it, what it needs, or when it got what it needed, it stops tantruming and then becomes like a regular part of your own life. It's, it's as regular as the raindrops and as car headlights, as your, your own eyeballs. As regular as anything you can possibly think of. And 
then you get down or up whichever direction you're sinking or floating to the point where words are no longer just tools for lying. <laughs> uh, they, they actually have something that's beyond that. And they, the words themselves actually become what you call truth. But not because you've somehow like found a thing or whatever. It's because the words have become not loud. They've become not so yelling, not so tantrumy, and they're just there, and they're natural, like the rain. At that point, when they're silent, uh, they you're not telling lies every time you speak. still in the clingy ego mind state, the worry state, then you're telling lies every time you speak or every time you think. Because it's an aspect of the creation that wishes to be bigger than it is or more than it is or it wants something somehow. That conceptual mind became very traumatized somehow. music. Mm -hmm. 